my name is Naima Shakur. I'm also known by my birth name, Sheila Nortley. I'm a former model and currently work as a producer for film and television. I embraced Islam in 2008. Oh, here we go. I was brought up in Mitcham, born and bred in Mitcham, um, which is just on the borderline of London and Surrey. Um, it's quite a nice, well, it's got its good parts and it's got its bad parts. The part that I'm from is actually, it's actually technically more modern. Um, growing up, it was actually quite a racist area. Loads of NFs, um, which are National Front um, people, so, you know, kind of like, they didn't really like black people. Um, but I went to school in Tooting, which was um, a lot more multicultural. In primary school, there weren't that many Muslim children um, at all, not that I can remember. Or, to be honest, growing up, I had a very, I had a very, a, a lack of understanding about Islam. So I always thought Islam was a religion for Asians and Arabs. So um, at school, a lot of the a lot of the children may have been Muslim, but I just would have thought, you know, the Asian kids are of Hinduism or Islam and not really known the difference. But growing up, secondary school, there were one or two Muslims. And I remember when I was in sixth form, I was about 16, 17, and there was a girl, um, a Muslim girl, and she didn't, she didn't cover her hair. And I remember saying to her, are you Muslim? She said, yeah. I said, why don't you, why don't you wear hijab? I said, Does, do you believe that God wrote the Quran? She said, yeah. And he said, you should wear hijab. She said, yeah. I said, so why don't you wear it? And um, now looking back, I realised what a forward question that it was for me to have asked her. But um, yeah, that was my first kind of experience speaking to a Muslim about Islam. And um, there was also a boy in my class called Abdul Hakim, a Somalian boy. And he used, to, he used to talk to me a little bit. And he said to me, you know what? You'd make a lovely Muslim. That's what he said to me. And I was a, obviously a Christian at the time. And he, he meant because I was very shy at school. I was very, um, I'd like to think I had, you know, good manners, probably better manners then than I, than I grew up um, to have. But he, when he said that to me, I remember thinking, you know, what does that mean? And, and looking back, I realised what a lovely compliment that was, mashallah. My family um, are very religious, especially on my mum's side. They're Christian. Um, yeah, my, my mum's family is very, very Christian. My dad's family is also very, very Christian. Um, my mum actually um, did a Christian theology course recently. Um, so she's something now that's called a lay reader, which means she goes to church, she wears the white gown and she, she preaches in the church. As a, as a young teen, I was very um, interested in African history, being that I'm obviously from Africa um, originally. So. You know, I had an idea that there, there was an answer to all of these questions, but I had so many more questions than answers. And I knew, you know, I'd hear information about this and information about that. But it wasn't knowledge because it was just scattered bits of information and I couldn't put it all together. Whereas now that I'm Muslim, it's like everything, I can see the whole picture now. I can see where this relates to that and where that relates to that. And I find to me, Islam to be the only religion that doesn't exclude um, the world, whereas a lot of religions, it's like, okay, it's just you and God, you and God, you go to church once a week, or, you know, and you, you, it's very individualistic, whereas Islam, it encourages you to look at history, um, look at what's happening in other countries, be aware of current affairs, because every single thing um, is, is linked, you know, and so Islam has provided me with a lot of the answers to many of the questions I have. I'm never going to know anything. And Islam has also provided me with that peace of mind that you, you may never know everything, you know. You may have all these conspiracy theories in your head and, you, you know, you're trying to work out, oh, why did that happen? What does that symbol mean? You know, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, you might never know, but have peace in that. You know who your Lord is, you know who you are, and you know from the, from the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad and what he said would happen, that's what's going to come to pass. So you kind of have peace. Um, yeah, I have a lot of peace now.
As a child growing up in the church, I would go every um, Sunday to church with my family. And I used to, I used to quite enjoy it. Um, my mum's church was a um, Church of England church, so it was quite, it wasn't quite, you know, there's a lot of churches which are quite charismatic and they clap and they sing. This church was very formal. Um, I remember getting in trouble for, yeah, for talking and things like this in church. Um, but it wasn't somewhere I particularly wanted to go. I remember when it got to the point when I was doing my, um, my confirmation, um, there's, a, there's a process that you go through. When you're about 14 and you're old enough to make your own decisions, they do what's called a confirmation in the church um, to kind of confirm you into Christianity now that you're a, a, a young man or a young woman. And it was at that point that the trouble really started because I started asking a lot of questions. You know, I was a, a very inquisitive child and I was not stupid. I think I was quite an intelligent young lady. So, uh, mashallah, so I would um, ask questions and I'd go and I'd ask my questions and they started to have a problem with that. And they'd be like, oh, she's putting up her hand again. And it got to a point, it, it got so bad that they said, I shouldn't be confirmed. They said, you're obviously not ready. And that's when I thought, how can I be, have faith in something or believe in something and they don't want me to ask any questions? And my questions were sincere, they weren't to cause trouble, but I wanted to know, um, you know why there were so many discrepancies in the Bible and um, I think my questions were also making other people say, yeah, why is that, you know, why is this? Um, and they didn't have the answers. And rather than say, we'll find out the answers, they said, you're not ready. And I thought, yeah, maybe I'm not. And um, it was at that point that I, I just kind of realised, yeah, there were a few um, question marks for me about in, in the religion of Christianity. And I've always been someone who's searching. And that's what I was doing. I was kind of, um, I was online and I was trying to, I was trying to make Christianity make sense for me because I believed there was a God. I believed, you know, reading the Bible, I believed a lot of it. I believed in the prophets. I believed that God wouldn't leave us on this earth without giving us a guidance. But I couldn't understand why there were so many mistakes, so many discrepancies. I knew that it had been changed. I knew why it had been changed. So I kind of felt, I'm, I, want, I believe in a God who would allow me to use my intellect to reason and rationalize. And so basically at the point when I embraced Islam, I was trying to find a way to make Christianity work for me. I had a friend, a Muslim friend, um, who I couldn't, he, he basically just recently got married, so I, I wasn't able to speak to him much, but he, in a brief time I spoke to him, um, he said to me, you know, he said to me, Islam is, is, is the truth. And I remember saying to him, you know, are you sure? Like, can you, are you 100% sure? Because I will look into it. And he said, trust me, this is the truth. And then he just disappeared. So I'd research online and I'd write down all my questions. And there was an Islamic shop in Tutin. And I'd go there with a page of questions and I'd ask as a brother in the shop and I'd ask him all my questions one by one by one and he'd answer them. I'd say, okay, thank you. And then I'd go home and then I'd make up another long list of questions and I'd do the same thing. And I remember the, the second or third time I went back, I went there and said, Salam alaikum. And I, I remember he said, oh, you're, you're coming far. And, like that, and I felt really embarrassed. But um, the last time when I went to him, I went with my questions and he answered all of them. And I, you know, I'd done my research and I'd say, okay, you know, why do the women have to pray behind the men? And why do the women have to cover up? And why this, why that? And how do you know the Quran hasn't been changed? And I said to him, look, if this is the truth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it and I'm going to put my heart and soul into this. So I, I need to get these questions answered. So I went through all my questions with him. And then he said to me, um, have you got any more questions? And that's, that's the point that I realised, you know, I said, no. And it was just silence and it was like okay now what you know and I said okay well I'm gonna go now <laughs> and he's like well if you have no more questions you have no more questions and it was at that point that I realized that if I leave this shop I thought in my heart if I leave this shop and I, I know now that this is the truth if I leave this shop and I and I haven't embraced this religion and anything happens to me I'm going to be accountable for not making a decision that I, that I know to be the truth. So I said, you know, I, said, I want to become a Muslim. And he was so surprised. He said, what, now here, now? I said, yeah. So he, he got, there were some other brothers and he called them in to be witnesses. 
and then they repeated the Shahada completely. Um, I'd never heard these words before in my life, but I said them and he translated it for me and I, I believed 100% at that point that this is the truth. So that's how I, that's how I became a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Okay, cool. Okay, so who are you auditioning for today? Alfred. Okay, cool. So we're just going to um, run through the script. Okay. Um, is anyone going to read anything? So what I basically do is I'm responsible for the, um, for the whole production um, of a film. Um, so it's everything from script development, casting, getting directors on board, getting crew on board, um, hair, makeup, getting everybody on board to, um, to make this particular production. Open the door. How it relates to my, um, my Islamic journey is um, I've always been a storyteller. I've always been someone that has liked to communicate through writing as opposed to, as opposed to speaking, as I'm doing now, or as opposed to um, standing in front of people and addressing people. I've always used the pen to communicate. And um, I found that with film, no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you believe in, film is a very powerful way to communicate a message to people. Um, so me being a Muslim, um, I find it a tool that I can, that I can use um, to share what I think, what I feel, and also to provide a platform for those um, who have maybe more knowledge or insight than me um, to express what they believe. Um, um, and I think that it's evident in my work where my, um, where my Iman is and where my uh, relationship to Allah is. You can see when um, I was more conscious of what I was putting out there um, and when I was less conscious of what I was putting out there, and that's very evident in my work. So there are certain topics that I do not want to promote. There are certain issues that I do not want to promote. And there are also certain issues that I want to highlight. And um, I want to do that as myself. Um, and as myself, I'm, I'm a Muslim. So that is the perspective that it, a lot of it will be coming from. I'm Daniel Bailey, I'm an actor. I met Naima in 2005. We, I started in our first film, which was The Hydra in 2008. It won an award at the Black Filmmakers Award in 2009. Um, when I first met Naima, she wasn't, she wasn't Muslim at the time. She was, I would say, more leaning towards Christian faith at that, at that moment in time. It was a bit of a shock because, as I said, she had very strong Christian friends, very, very strong, and, and the reactions from some of her friends were, um, they were a bit thrown off. They didn't understand um, why she had converted or um, what, what, what pushed her to convert or, or what she had found why she, she chose to convert. So they was, maybe wasn't as accepting at that time. Being a Muslim isn't, isn't the easiest thing in the Western world at this time, especially getting into media, um, getting into that industry is very difficult. For you to be a woman is difficult. For you to be a black woman is difficult. For you to be a woman that's black, um, that's also Muslim, you can imagine it's very, very difficult. But I don't think she's, uh, she, don't, she hasn't allowed that to, to, um, to be a stumbling block. She hasn't allowed that to, to, to halt her in any way or, or hinder her, her, um, her careers or aspirations. She hasn't allowed her to, that, that to, to become a barrier. And that's why I, I love her for that. Because honestly, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing battle. Um, just coming into a room with a hijab amongst uh, executives can be intimidating for them, I think, not for her, but for them. For me personally, um, I was always going to stick by Naima and, and I was happy that she converted because once she had converted, I could see that she got more focused. She definitely started pursuing her dreams much more and um, she, became more, she became more of a woman. To be honest, what, what my, my journey in Islam has been very interesting because when I first reverted in 2008, I did what a lot of people do. I was like, this was like a big secret that, it, that I felt everyone had hidden. It was like, this is like a, a gem of truth that just stands out in a world that is filled with, with lies and, and deception. Um, so I just thought, oh my, you know, this is wonderful. This is what I've always been looking for. So I, I cut off myself from a lot of people and I just jumped in head first. And for someone with very, very little knowledge, to be honest, you know, I haven't studied intensely. Um, it can be quite overwhelming and it can be quite excessive. Um, so then I completely um, stepped, stepped away for a while. 
now I'm at a place where I'm kind of trying to find the balance um, and have a balance in all areas of my life with, with an Islamic um, core behind it. When you first become Muslim, um, there's, a f there's a fear of being judged by your non-Muslim friends. And when you, when you become Muslim, there's still a fear of being judged by your Muslim friends. And you can never, ever please everybody. So um, a lot of people have actually surprised me and said, no, you know, I think it's good what you're doing. Just try and keep sincere and try and keep your intention pure. And um, I try, yeah, I, I just try and do what I believe to be right. Um, and I've not, I've not received too much criticism. Though I'm, I, you know, there may be people that may say things not to me, but... You know, that's be that's between them and Allah, really, not not me. My my family were much more understanding than I imagined. I was really scared um, to tell them I was Muslim. Yeah, I remember I told my mum in the kitchen. She was cooking, and it was just. A burden because me and my mum are so close we're so close and I love my mum so much and I was so scared to upset her so um, I was in the kitchen and I, I just said mum I want to tell you something and she's like what I said I'm Muslim and um, I think she probably I, I can't remember exactly what her first response was but she was just very I was I was expecting the worst yeah and she just kind of nodded and she was like okay okay I think she didn't really know what to expect, and that was that was it. And I kind of wanted more from her, but she didn't give too much away. Then it was telling my dad that was the big deal, where I said, "Mom, how am I going to tell dad? How am I going to tell dad?" And I, I that dragged on and on. And I think he went to Ghana and came back, and I still hadn't told him. And I, I was like, "Mom, mom, mom, how am I going to tell dad?" And she just said it. She just said it. She said it for me. She just said, "Ernest, your, your daughter saying she's Muslim." <laughs> And he, again, I was very surprised by his response. He just said, he said, okay. And to be honest, it's my dad that has been very, um, I think he's brought me and my dad closer, strangely enough, because when my family, my, you know, my extended family, well, you know, my auntie, she's very Christian. And she said, the devil's got you and blah, blah, blah. And she phoned, she phoned him, my dad's sister, to speak to him. And um, she said, oh, I want to speak to, I want to speak to Naima. She came on the phone and she said, you know, what are you doing? You know, the devil has obviously got you. You're being misled. And my dad took the phone away from it and he said, he's, and he just really defended me. And I was so surprised and so happy. And he said, he said to her, what, you, what, what, my, what she believes and what we believe is the same. We believe in one God. But then he said, you worship, he said, we worship him through Jesus. She worships him through Muhammad. So I let him finish, and then I said, actually, Dad, we don't actually worship through Muhammad. So listen, we, we just believe we can worship God directly. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah. And he said, okay. And he'd, he'd, he'd listen to me, you know, I could, and one time I remember he said to me as well, he said, if what you're doing is correct, then you have to teach us. He said, because, he said, because we don't know. And he said, all of our, our grandma, our great grandma, your ancestors, as far back as he knows, have all been Christian. And he said, you're doing something different. And if what you're doing is, is the truth, you need to tell us about it. And he always would give me these, and he still does, give me these opportunities to speak with him. And I remember when I had the chicken pox, I had chicken pox quite late. I had chicken pox a few months ago, April. <laughs> and I was, it was horrible. And um, again, my dad, when I was better, he, he knocked on my door, he said, he said, um, you're better. And I said, yeah. He said, it's Allah that, that healed you. And he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And <laughs> I took my phone out <laughs> and I started recording because I said, I can't believe it, you know what I mean? And, and I just, he, he really does make an effort. When anything goes right for me, he makes, he makes an effort. And my mum as well, so I can't complain. You know, the meat in the house is, is usually, they buy halal. If it's not halal, they'll tell me. Um, you know, and we can now just have a joke and a laugh. Like one time my mum cooked and it smelled so nice. I said, like, oh, mum, I can't wait. And she said, oh, it's pork. And I said, oh, mum, you're persecuting me. <laughs> I said, why are you persecuting the Muslims? And we, we just have a, a joke like that, because obviously I can't eat it. So now things are OK. But me and my mum, there has been a bit of a distance between us, which has been quite hard for me. Um, yeah, but we're getting there. Alhamdulillah, we're getting there. OK, mum. Ah, hello. Yeah. So, how have you been? 
Um, just um, I went to Aisha's for a little bit, okay. and um, we were casting for my new film and all that kind of stuff. So oh, okay. Busy, busy, busy. I know. Same <laughs> here. Same here. Mum, everyone wants to know how did you feel when I told you I was Muslim or I was becoming Muslim? Uh, it was very difficult for me, really. Because I remember when you came home from uni and then you started putting scarves on your, you know, when yeah. you were going out and I thought, oh, what's happening, you know, in the summer and you got scarves. I around my neck yes. when I go out and I <laughs> You know, and you know, I started suspecting, but I mean, I couldn't ask because uh, probably I was scared of the answer I would get. But then eventually, mm. yeah, you told me and I thought, you know, that really took me back a bit. Has it got um, easier? Um, I think so, even though it's still difficult. Um, but, you know, as you know, I, I did this interfaith thing yeah. on, on my course. Mm -hmm. So probably it's opened my eyes a bit to it, but it's still very difficult for me because thinking that I've taken you to church and, you know, I want you to get involved in all these churchy things yeah. um, in my church and uh, where I've I am now as a lay reader. It's it's, it's difficult for me. Yeah. It's, it's really what, what's, difficult what's for me. What's the hardest part? Is it the way I dress, or is it when I have to say I'm <laughs> going to go pray, or what? What do you find? Oh, difficult? I don't mind about prayers at all because um, I'm all for prayers. So what do you find? But I, I think, well, to be honest, I mean, I've been saying this all the time that because of these terrorist terrorist things, yeah. you know, I just get scared for you. Yeah dressed like that because everybody will know oh, Muslims you know and you know this like like they've painted Muslims as being but what about you do, do you have that do you think that Muslims are terrorists um, is that what you think um um because well, I thought you know I'm not gonna go <laughs> I know but but um how do you feel when other people in the family like are quite kind of a bit harsh like you know why am I why am I becoming Muslim why am I dressing this way how do you cope with it well, the only thing I say is that I've been always praying to God to guide you and guide me. If I'm going the right, uh, the wrong way rather, he will guide me where yeah. to go. So, um, I mean, I can't really judge you in that way that, you know, you are doing something You're wrong. You're beautiful. Mom. You know what I You're mean? You're beautiful. Because yeah. I, I, I um, do the same thing. Yeah. Like I pray yes. for God to guide me yes. and for God to guide you yes. and for God to guide the family. Yes. And in the five prayers that we do, yeah. we say, Ihdina surat al mustaqim, which mm. means guide us on the straight path, mm. the path of those who, mm. it goes on to say, the path mm. of those who you have mm. chosen. Mm. And mm. I think whether you're Christian or Muslim, whatever you are, you yeah. want to be guided to the straight path. Exactly, so yeah. yeah. My so, prayer for you is the same. Yeah, so it's, you know, same both ways, really. Um, yeah. You know, we just take each day at a time. You keep praying, I keep praying, and then, you know, we'll see what the Almighty will do. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. I believe in, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. cut it. Don't be shy. <laughs> She's so small that I, I actually just have to hold her. <laughs> but yeah, I love you so much, yeah. Mama. Thank you for it. Like, I really, really do appreciate it.